pictures. Uh, so hopefully now we've got YouTube <laughs> and Twitter as well, all over the place. Um, so these are the three roses and domes that we have available in the kits. Um, the smallest of the dome has a light up LED base. It's just got a little switch on the bottom so you can turn it on and off. I think that's going to look absolutely adorable. That's the smallest of the domes. I'll take you over to the website in a moment so you can have a look. The medium dome, now I've actually stained this base. Uh, the medium dome will hold a slightly larger rose. Um, I do encourage you to drill a hole in the bottom of it as well, uh, which will actually hold your rose into place. But you could hot glue gun it um, and then put some f uh, moss around the bottom, maybe hide some of that glue with some fallen petals if you want to do Beauty and the Beast. I'll show you how to do that as well. And then the largest dome, all of the measurements are on the website, but I just wanted to show you them live so that you could get... Um, a good feel for uh, the sizes of them. So they are the three domes that we have. There is the option to buy your uh, rose kits. Hello. There is the option to buy the rose kits without the domes. So if you just wanted to make roses on their own, you can do that as well. Um, there's one essential tool I would really recommend you getting your hands on to make your beaded flowers, and that's a bead spinner. I'm gonna take you through all of it. I'll very quickly pop you onto the website uh, so that you can have a quick look at what we have available there is a set that will make three smaller roses uh, you've got the beaded rose with display dome so that is the smallest of the domes that's your led light up one uh, 19.99 that's everything you need to make your rose and the dome uh, the yellow rose kit on its own um, or of course with the dome we've got the three sizes of the domes and if you bear with us for another 10 or 15 minutes, uh, there will also be a peach and a purple um, option on there as well. I'm going to show you the peach because it's my favourite. Um, okay, so let's get going. Uh, lots of fun to be had. Um, it's going to be busy. I'm going to try and do the whole thing with you. I have pre-prepped some of my petals. Um, I'm going to show you how to make one in every size and then we're going to construct a whole thing because the construction side is... Um, the harder part for you to work out on your own, so I'm going to take you through all of it. Uh, so let me show you the rose nice and close up so you can have a little look. Um, this is in the yellow. You will get a slightly different colour green with each of them as well. I've married it up so that they complement the colours beautifully. Uh, so for those of you who joined us for the orchid tutorial, we were making pointed petals. Today we're going to do rounded, um, which is how you make the beautiful rose. I've got three smaller petals in the centre. I've got six slightly larger petals working on the outside. Then I've got three even larger still and one extra large. So I'm going to show you how to create all of them. You also make the little sepal base. Uh, so that's the um, leaves that the buds will come out of. We'll uh, create that. That will hide all of those wire workings as well. And two slightly larger leaves for the actual stem. Um, and like I said, if when it comes to displaying them in the dome, you just drill a little hole through the centre. You can actually then stand up perfectly. I'll just embed that in and your rose will sit in there and stand up absolutely beautifully. Uh, on the smaller dome, you don't need a hole. It will actually just hold it and the petals will touch the sides and it will sit perfectly in the middle. OK, so first of all, prepping our materials, I'm using a 0.4 wire. Obviously, you will get all of this in your kit. 0.4 millimetre wire. Keep that on the spool and give yourself a good few coils to hold that wire in place. We're just going to embed it in the little nodule that's on the wire itself. And then I've decanted my beads into my bead spinner. Now the bead spinner will prevent me from having to pick up every single bead. I'm going to sit on that. Um, every single bead individually. So if you don't have a bead spinner... Prepping your beads can be a little bit time consuming. You would take your wire using it just as your needle and you would pick them up individually like so. Uh, but we need metres and metres of beads to be able to make our flower. So the bead spinner is going to cut that time more than in half. Um, so I'm going to create a little hook on the bottom. And if we've got any bead spinners, they should be on the page as well. I'm going to create a little fish hook on the base of my wire and hold it a good few inches from that hook. The tip of my wire wants to be coming into contact with the beads. So I'm right handed, so I'm going to hold my wire in my right hand and I'm going to spin anti-clockwise. If you're left handed, you spin clockwise 
and hold the wire on the other side. So of course the beads need to be touching the end, so that will tell you which way to spin it. You want to make sure that the hook is going to sit and come into contact with those beads. So I've just ever so slightly opened it up and then I just start to spin and my wire sits just below the surface of the beads in the widest part and you can see those beads just fly up in a matter of seconds. Because my wire is on the spool, I'm then going to keep those beads, move them down the wire. They're not going to fall off because, of course, I'm on the spool. If you find that you stop picking up beads, so I just tend to go until it meets my fingers. Because I've got a hook on the end, you'll notice that I hold those beads before I lift it out, because otherwise you're going to lose everything. You can slightly angle your hand, change the direction. If it stops picking up beads, just give it a slight little alter in um, direction and that will pick up more beads for you. I also hold it almost horizontally. I don't want to battle with gravity and with these beads so I don't hold it vertically. I'm holding it horizontally so they just beautifully travel up that wire and already I've picked up enough probably to finish my three petals that we're going to make in every size for the rose. So I tend to sit and prep this for five minutes or so and then you will have enough beads on your wire to then just be able to sit and make the petals. It's really lovely. I sit and prep it at my desk and then I go and transfer over onto the sofa, get comfy, put a program on and you can sit and make your petals. It's really, really lovely to do. Um, and of course, like I said, it just cuts down your preparation time by so much. Okay, so that will probably do us for our petals. Let's get going. We're gonna make rounded petals. So rounded petals are fantastic for things like pansies, tulips, uh, roses obviously in this case, anything that has that rounded petal. When we were doing the orchid, and I'll bring that in for you in a moment to see, in case you missed it, you can go back and have a little look. Um, they have pointed, so pointed petals would be for things like your orchid, your lilies, uh, daisies, sunflowers, and so on. I've got lots more flowers coming for you. Okay, so I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna move my beads just a few centimeters from the top. And for my smallest of petals, I'm gonna start with about a centimeter of beads. Now I never count beads for my beaded flowers. I always just do it by length and by eye. These are our FGB beads. They are a beautiful quality. They're not a craft bead, uh, in which case you get lots of irregularity. You can see how beautifully these sit together. Um, but they're also not a Toho or a Delica. Um, they are very expensive. And in the sheer volume that you need for making flowers, that would make it very expensive. So they're a beautiful middle ground, beautiful quality without the high price. So I'm going to bring up one, two, three, four, five, about six beads. It's about a centimetre's worth. And I'm going to take it a few centimetres from the top. I'm then going to have plain wire, clear of any beads, but I've still got the beads. This is all attached to my spool. I'm going to loop that around and I'm going to hold it together with the beads that I've brought up. And then I'm going to pop my fingers into this loop to open it up and give a twist. Now, by opening it up, I'm navigating these twists and pushing them all the way up to the top. If I were just to sit and twist it, it would go all over the stem. So you put your fingers in, open it up and twist. And by doing that, I'm just, like I said, pushing all of those coils up to the top. So this is our basic setup. This wire has all of my beads on it fresh from my spool. I've got my starting centre spine, which is my centimetre, and a little gap at the top. I'm just going to get rid of that kink just by pulling it through my fingers. You want your centre spine to be nice and straight. You've then got your coils below it and this little loop. This loop will become our stem. So you want it to be a reasonable length. And then I always like to rotate my work. I always bead towards me. So I've got the beads now sitting on the left hand side. I'm going to bring up enough. And this is why I was saying I never count. It's always just done by eye. I'm going to bring up enough beads to take me to the top and slightly over that centre spine, like so. And then I'm going to hold those in place and I'm going to take my wire horizontally and wrap it all the way around that spine. Now when we do pointed petals we do funny angles and sharp turns. With this one it's just a very straightforward flat twist. 
So I've gone from horizontal on my right, coming over the top of the spine, all the way around the back and all the way back to my starting point. So that's now held into place. I'm gonna bring up a few more beads and I rotate my work in my hand. Your beads always want to be falling down towards the point where they will hang. Uh, so for example, if I were to make this petal and hold it up here, gravity is pulling those beads down. So the likelihood of me getting gaps up at the top is very high. So I rotate it over, making sure that the beads sit nice and flat together. You can push those in. Because gravity is pulling them down, I have no gaps. Maybe one extra bead in there, I think. So just do it by eye. And again, we're just gonna wrap all the way around. So like a little, little hand flick. Bring up your next lot of beads, rotate it over. And again, you just want enough to meet that centre spine. Bringing it nice and flush to all the other beads. You see, I've got a little gap there, so I could do with one more. Nice and flush and a tight coil. And you'll see that I use my thumb just to push that in. Now, if you get any kinks along the wire, just straighten it out, running it through your fingers so that you will get just the neatest finish. And again, I take my nail, my thumb, straight into that wire to keep it nice and tight. As I flip over to the top, I transfer to my index finger. Now, one, two, three, four, five. This is a five row rounded petal. So I've got one, two, three, four, five rows of my beads. It will always be odd numbers because we've got that center spine that we're working around. And that's the size that I need for my smallest petals. Or did I do nine actually? One, two, three, four, five, six, I did seven. So this is my five. I need two more rows and they are my smallest beads for in, uh, smallest petals for in the center. So we'll take it over twice more. And just be careful when you're working around this spine, just keep straightening it and keeping it central because they do have a tendency to wobble off to a side. So you want to keep it nice and flat and straight so that my spine is running all the way through down to the stem. It's just gonna give you the nicest, neatest finish. Okay, so that's my seven row. And then to finish it, I'm just gonna hold those beads flat and to secure it, I'm just gonna wrap two, three times down at the base. And then I'm gonna take my cutters and cut in as near to it as I can. Don't worry about this little bit that's pointing out because we will neaten that up when we start to prep everything. So for the middle, I need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a nine. So I've got a seven and a seven. I'm gonna do, oh, good. I've got one more of those. So that's my three for the very middle. Then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've gone up by two more rows. I've got three petals of seven rows. One, two, three, four, five of my nine rows. That will be my next size up. And then these guys are my largest ones that will go around the outside. Now these should be 13 or 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I've got three rows of 13. I'm gonna do one of 15, which will give me the biggest petal on the outside. Now you can play around with this. As you get bigger in the petals, I've only gone for about a centimeter and a half. So a centimeter for my smaller ones, a centimeter for this one, but because this outside one I wanna be really big, I'm gonna go for about a centimeter and a half. Remember, there's no point counting the beads. Um, whenever I teach French beading, you're so used to working with weaves and counting and patterns uh, that for the first few petals, everybody always counts how many beads they bring up. By the time you've made one, you realize it makes absolutely no relevance to the piece. It's all just done by eye. Do excuse me. So, flipping that work over so that I'm always working towards me, it just makes for a nicer, neater coil. Just gonna bring out a few more coils on my wire so that I've got space. 
bringing those beads up and over. So push them into each other so that you get the neatest finish. Now, can you see if I bring this down, it leaves me too much of a gap. So I'm gonna take away some of those beads, probably one or two, so that it will bring it in and reach over without having that gap. Twisting it all the way around. And again, rotating so that those beads are falling with gravity, bringing it in, coiling it around that spine. And remember, because we're not doing pointed, it's just a flat coil all the way along. I've got a little kink in that wire, so I'm just gonna run it through my fingers, straighten it out. That will give me the nicest, neatest finish, up and over, coiling around. Again, getting rid of any of those kinks, especially in these bigger petals, because these are going to be a lot more openly visible than the middle of your flower. Lots of the center pieces are hidden because of course we're just gonna cover it with petals. But these outer ones, by the time you get to those, you'll be a pro. They're gonna look beautiful and perfected with all these techniques that you've been practicing as you grow your petals. So the, the very inner ones are kind of like your practice pieces because they're not gonna be as visible. You can learn. Um, and then of course, by the time you get to the outside, you're gonna be a pro. By the time we get to the leaves, they're beautiful. Um, do let us know if you have any questions. Obviously we are interacting with you live. Um, lovely Lucy uh, will compile them all uh, or I will run through them at the end. Um, but do let me know if you've got any because I can keep a little eye on whilst we're going. So I'm also, now that we're getting bigger, I'm also flattening all of these so that the petal stays nice and neat. Um, what colour is that for the rose petals? Now this is the peach colour. It wasn't on the website this morning, I'm afraid, but I believe Simon is adding it in for you. If you head on over to the website uh, into our Facebook categories, it should be there. Uh, we have the yellow, the red, the peach and the purple. And then I've married them all up with tones of green that will match them beautifully. The yellow has almost like a rainbow finish to it. Um, it just picks up the most beautiful colors. And so I married it with a green to do the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I might even have to spin on a few more beads. So once you get to the end of your beads, of course, I've been picking them up with the bead spinner whilst we were attached on the spool. So I've probably got enough, I might just have enough to finish this petal, but I'll show you how to spin a few more beads on in case. So can you see that it's slightly beginning to overlap on the outside? Ah, the peach is on there now. Uh, so head on over to the website and you will have all of these kits. You can either buy them separately just to make the roses or of course we've got the display domes as well. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Ah, oh, I'm just shy of beads. So what I will do, I've got one more row to make, but this is my last little lot of beads that are already on my wire. So I'm gonna leave myself enough wire so that I can finish my petal. I'm gonna cut that from the spool so this is now loose. I can just bring in my spinner, dip in and just pick up enough for that last little row. So you can see that actually it takes seconds when you have a bead spinner just to bring up enough to finish that last one. Um, but prepping it beforehand is always so much easier because like I said, Oh, would you look at that? I was just one bead extra. Um, prepping it beforehand and spinning those beads on and then just being able to sit and make the petals is so lovely. And then to finish, because we're at the base, just a few coils to secure it into place and trim that off. Okay, so that is all of our, oh, no, it's not. I've got the center of my rose to make. Now, for the very center, we actually have 
a spiraled section of beads because that will actually give you that you know the the tightness of the inside of a rose when all of those petals are still in the bud in the very center and they're just about coming open um, we're going to replicate that so these are all of my petals i've got a row of 15 of just one petal i've got three rows of 30 13 or 11 i'll count it again in a minute um th uh, five petals of my nine row and three of my seven now for the very very center I'm going to start with a much longer section. So I'll just spin for one sec, pick up a load of beads. I'll probably go for three lengths of these. And for the very, very middle, we're going to start with three and a half centimeters of beads. So on that center spine that we were working on for our petals, we were only working with a centimeter or a centimeter and a half. And now we're going to go big. And this is so clever, doing this little coil in the very centre. So, bringing up about three and a half centimetres of beads, roughly. And you'll notice I don't count and I don't measure any of them. That obviously just comes with experience for making these. Get your ruler out, have a little look. You can make sure that you've got all those right uh, measurements if you're unsure to begin with um, but then of course as you make more and more and your sets will make plenty um, you will begin to uh, know by eye how many you can use plus we are replicating nature it's never perfect it's never identical it's never the exact size so I've got this very long center spine all set up in the same way as we did with our petals and now I'm just going to do a three row so I've just got my very very middle I'm going to bring this in super tight and it's really important when you make longer leaves like these you may have seen my beaded lavender before when you're making the the grass and the leaf for lavender they're super long and it just keeps it really nice and neat if you can just make sure run your fingers up squeeze those together again rounded top and then one more row on the outside, rotating it over. Make sure you straighten that out and bring it in next to it. And then this will be the very, very middle of our rows. And a few coils on the bottom to finish. Trim that off. I'm just gonna put a little knotty bit on the end of my wire which will stop those other beads from falling off okay now we can prep so to make sure that all of them look super neat this loop that we had on our wire i'm going to trim the very middle of that this is going to give us our spine that naughty little sharp piece i'm just going to take my flat nose pliers and i'm just pinching as i rotate around that's now perfectly smooth and it's not going to cut you as you start to work with it. These top sections, which were our spines, I'm gonna cut off and leave about half a centimeter. You just need a few millimeters, and then we're gonna fold it back onto the spine at the base, the back side of your leaf. So they have a front and a back. The front side is beautifully neat. You can't see any wire. Those beads should just interlock to each other beautifully. On the back side, you see that exposed wire, you see that spine and you see your wraps. So there is a front and a back side. So when we're prepping, I like to just flatten them all out so that I just have the best shape to begin with. Cutting that stem, getting rid of the sharp bit, flipping it over, cutting the top and folding that back like so, so back onto the back side of your petal. And you'll do that for all of them. And this for me is like the exciting build up. Once I get to this stage, I know all my beading is done and I know that I'm gonna start constructing, which is just my favorite bit. So we'll do all of these, turn it over, Make sure you leave enough up at the top here because if you leave too little 
as we start to mold and shape these petals and we're going to start giving them a little bend and a twist and a turn then you want to make sure that it's just got that little bit of movement or else you will lose that um, top section to your petals so you need to leave enough that you have that little bit of manoeuvrability. If you're worried about it, leave a longer length. It's not gonna be visible at all. So it really is just hiding those mechanisms and our wire workings. So just make sure you leave yourself enough that you're happy and confident with it. Just a few more to go. And you'll see that the length of my spines, so these longer stems, they're, they're, they're all varied. Uh, this is the starting loop that we begin with, with our wire. They're all varied lengths and on some of them I make it super long because that's going to give me wire that I can build my stem with as we construct the flower. So like we always say, you can always add uh, you can always take some off but you can never add more so leave yourself a good few longer stems just to make sure you have oh sorry noisy just to make sure you've got enough to construct it with as we go but I will also show you how you can add a little bit more in. Now there should also be a one millimeter wire in thickness. If you want to have these as freestanding, you can actually reinforce the stem itself uh, just to make it a little bit thicker. Um, if you don't have any one mil wire, you could even put like a little rod inside of it. It depends how you're going to display them. If you wanted to sit them in a vase even, uh, or into some oasis, uh, you can reinforce that, I will show you. Now in your sets, in your kits, you will also get the floristry wire because we're gonna bind, and that is um, the perfect finish. When you bind it, it just takes it from a beaded rose into looking like a real rose. Okay, so now we come to construction. I am going to use my very middle, so this is my three pointed petal, and I'm gonna sit these all in size order so that we know where we're going. So smaller, medium, larger outer pet. Oh, had a rogue one I haven't prepped. These are the larger petals for the outside. And then I have my extra large one, which is just my nice little finishing touch. Okay, so for the very center, my little triple stem, I'm gonna take it, I'm going to twist it like so and then we're going to fold over about a quarter from the top so I'm not doing it in half I'm just doing about a quarter and we're going to just fold that over so that you get just this nice little cluster and it looks like the petals are just coming out of the bud that is going to be our very middle and this will now be my centre that I'll start building everything on. So we're going to take our smaller petals and you can attach them one by one or you can do it all together. It's entirely up to you. Now, because the um, beginning petals are just coming out, I'm going to make it so that they just fold over at the top. So this is where you can really make things start to look realistic. So I take my petals, I push my thumb into the very bottom of it so it just slightly domes out and gives me a little cup in the bottom holding that i'll then take the very top and i'll just fold it outwards like so so then you can see that you start to get a very realistic flower petal slightly domed on the bottom tipped over at the top and i'll do that for all three of them so pushing your thumb into the bottom, just rounding it over up at the top. And each of them are gonna be completely different. You won't get it perfect every time, but you don't want it to be. Remember, it's nature, isn't it? So they're all gonna be slightly different. Some of them you might wanna fold more, some of them you might want to fold less. Then I'm gonna take this petal and I'm going to sit it 
and squeeze it together with the base of my center. I'm gonna hold those together in my finger and I'm gonna twist. Now, pick your direction of your twist. So in this case, I'm holding the stem and twisting away from me. Every petal that you add on now, you'll twist in the same direction. Because if you start to twist in opposite directions, you're gonna undo the previous petals. So I want them to slightly overlap. So I'm gonna take my second petal, sit it so that it just overlaps, hold on to that stem, and you'll see I'm not squishing the top of the flowers, I'm all, only holding on with the tips. And I want these coils to go right up to the top. So just like we navigated those coils at the beginning, if I hold it tighter here, I can actually twist that in. Now you'll see that the petals have moved, but that's okay because I can rotate it around and open it up a little. And then my last petal for my smallest ones will just sit and overlap with the two of these as well. So just take a moment to position it in, sitting it into the base, holding it. Oh, started to twist the other way, didn't I? Oh yeah, no, I'm right, turned it over. <laughs> okay, and this will start to give us our spine. So I'm wrapping all of the wires together and I'm just gonna take a moment, because you can see these are moved all around the place. Take a moment just to position them in. So I'm gonna fold it in on each other a little bit so that they hug each other. And that's gonna give me the middle of my rows like so. So that starts to give me the center. Now we're going to do the same thing and add on the bigger petals. Now because I'm now quite bulky at the bottom here, you know that we were putting um, our thumbs into the base to make... Um... <laughs> Kitty's just said that rose has my name on it. Perfect to go into my craft room. I'm losing all these roses rapidly. I put a picture on Facebook of the yellow one and mum said exactly the same thing to me. That's got my name on it. Now, because we're beginning to get a little bit bulky at the bottom of our petals, I'm gonna make a bigger dome. So I'm pushing my thumb, so I'm kind of opening up that base of it and bringing them out. I'm not gonna to worry too much about doing too much of the fold at the top because I can neaten it all up when I start to construct it, but you want your rows to start opening now. So you'll see that I've got that big dome in the bottom. So this is where all of this will sit. And then you've got the roses coming on the outside, uh, sorry, the, the petal coils coming on the outside, the fold. So nice big cup in the bottom and I'm really pushing my entire thumb into there, giving it that indent. If you get any gaps in your petals like these, just try and neaten it up and squish it together. We'll do this for all of them. Pushing my thumb in. and just coiling over the top. The bigger dome you give it, the bigger seat in here, the better um, it will actually sit when it's constructed. Because what you'll find is that as you add these petals, you don't wanna keep on adding layers and it ends up looking long. You want it working outwards. So by doing that little cup, you've got it in there. Yeah, you do have to fight me for this one. This is like my rose gold <laughs> version of a flower. Now, to stop it from just growing in length, I'm also gonna now take this wire and I'm just gonna knock it back a little bit so that my petal, you can see now, my stem is long. It will sit perfectly in here, but it's gonna cup the rest of my petals, like so. So where you get two of your petals from the previous round meeting, you're going to add your next petal in. So it's still sat at about the same level as the previous ones. And we're gonna give it a twist to hold it into place. Don't worry if they move, but do try to keep on realigning it because of course it's gonna give you the positioning for the next ones. So I'm just knocking that wire back. Oh, you're right, Angela. She says, it's okay, it makes three. <laughs> I'll be all right, I can keep one. 
So I'm just going to allow those to slightly overlap and sit next to each other. And bring it in. Now I can feel that up here we're getting a little bit looser. It's not binding. So I'm just going to hold it with my pliers. And I'm just going to tighten all of that up a little bit. Now this is where you need to be careful because anyone who is familiar with working with wire knows that if you overdo it, you can break it. So you just want to be mindful of that. Now as it starts to grow, I find it easier to take the wire and rather than coiling the whole thing, I'm just going to secure it with a couple of looser twists like so. And I'm going to reinforce all of this just by binding it together a little bit. So you'll see I'm starting to get quite a substantial stem. It actually holds now rather than flopping, which is good. It's going to start to give us that rigidity in the stem we need for it to be able to stand up. Okay, I've got two more of these. So I'm going to go in here. So I'm starting to overlap now some of my other petals. I'm going to take that in nice and tight to the base. And wrap a few down. Really important to knock those petals back. And then you just have a little look. Start having a look at the construction of it. See where it's going. Obviously you're going to have gaps. Um, because we're going to start to fill it as we go. But I can see that I need to put this one on the outside here. And you can hold it underneath. You can think, well, if I go here, actually it's going to start to take it out too far. So I'm going to go in here, which just balances it out a little bit. Now, you can see that in there, aren't we? Yeah. Once you've then positioned it, you know that you're in the right place and you can secure it in. Now, some of the petals you can see are beginning to get moved. It's beginning to open up a little bit. I'm going to neaten all of that up at the end. At the moment, we just want the main construction and then I can fiddle with it a little bit at the end. Um, so we will neaten all of that up. Because if I spend, I could spend 10 minutes faffing around with it now and neating it up. But every time I add a new petal on, I'm going to squash it in my hand and I'm going to move it ever so slightly. So it is a bit of a waste. I'm going to wait until we have the whole thing. Sorry, I'm very croaky today. Okay, out to our bigger petals. So, same thing. Knocking that wire back, and I've actually gone to 90 degrees now because you can see the base is getting bigger and bigger. <clears throat> Excuse me, we need that big old dome in the bottom. Pushing that thumb into the base, and I'm completely using the entire tip of my thumb now. And rolling over. And they'll just start to mould. It just gives you the most amazing shape um, by using your thumb in the base and using your finger just to push that over. And then you can see I've straightened up the wire, so I'm just going to knock that back again. And adding that in to where you need it to be. Now, you might find if you come up too high... The petal's too big. So I'm just going to go ever so slightly lower because I now want to hide all of this wire. So these ones are going to be my pretty petals that we'll see on the outside. So work out where you want it to go. I'm hugging this around the entire bud that we just made, like so. Whee! Get out of the way. And wrapping it down. Now because these petals are some of my last. I'm just going to neaten up the rest of this stem. Do be careful because if you've got shorter pet, uh, shorter stems, some of these will start to come out. So just like we did when we neatened up the base, tiny little pincy movements and twisting it around and that should get rid of those. I'm also now with these going to start to bring in the edges. So I'm just folding it around. So not only am I putting my thumb in there, but I'm moulding it around my thumb and tipping over my finger. 
again just getting that lovely petal shape these are our FGBC beads so it stands for fancy glass beads they are pretty much the, the cost of a craft bead but uniformity I can't say of Toho or Mayuki or anything like that because they're not perfect um, I wouldn't use these for weaving projects but you still get the um, you still get the amazing quality you can see they all sit beautifully quality and um, just sheer volume if you were to make these in something like a Delica or a Mayuki it would cost you an absolute fortune um, which would still be nice you can work to that as a goal oh my goodness this is so pretty um, but you get the sheer volume without having to sacrifice the expense uh, with that, uh, the quality sorry you don't get the expense with it okay so there is my rose I've got my one bigger petal to add in and I you can add in as many or as little as you would like now I tend to like to open up my roses and have them quite open and wide but you could make little buds and tiny little rosebuds entirely up to you um, also I never really know how many petals I'm going to add into it until I get to this stage, I add them in as I go. So for me, for this one, you can see that that bigger petal just on the outside is just about right. Um, but of course, if you wanted to, you could add smaller ones, bigger ones, you can add in as many as you like. Now this base final petal, I'm almost folding it in half around my thumb. And I want this one to open up really, really wide. So I want it to almost fold in half on itself as well because that's going to be my very outer one. And again, bringing this back. Um, I would say that a beginner could make these because it's the, the petals are super, super simple and easy to make. Um, it's then just construction and forming it, which I'm about to show you in its entirety. Um, start off with a tiny little rosebud um, you know you could make three petals and put them together um, the technique is super simple pointed petals uh, so when we did the orchid are a little bit harder uh, for you to master at first because you just need to get those kind of funny turns and angles whereas with this one you're just wrapping it around on a on a flat line okay so I'm just going to construct this together a little bit more and just get my final shape so I want to make sure that all of my petals are sitting nice and neat so I squash them in my fingers just to straighten it up and open this up ever so slightly and then I can pull out some of those petals from the beginning I want to hide some of this wire can you see those little spines that we hid at the back I don't really like seeing them so I will just fold that petal just like a rose petal would. You know when you get that really tight lip on the outside where it almost begins to coil up on itself. Open up that middle. Now don't get too hung up at this stage about how it looks, but you can see, oh, I love it. Now I'm holding this in because at the moment I've got a bit of flop there, uh, but we will neaten that up. At the moment, it looks beautiful, very dimensional. You've got all of those gorgeous textures and layers in there. Um, but at the moment, it doesn't look that realistic because we need to add in the greenery. So I'm gonna prep my green ones. I'm just going to spin some green. Keep um, an empty bag handy because especially if you have the wooden spinner, if you've got like the electronic ones, it's not so bad because it, it comes with multiple dishes. But if you need to change your colours, I just always keep an extra little bag handy so that I can very quickly decant and then you can use like a funnel or we'll use some paper to bring that in. Cutters, cutters. So we're going to make our little sepal base for the rose itself. 
And when we start to add in greenery, especially when we bind it at the end, we're going to have a really lovely realistic finish. That's when the finishing touches come in. So I'm going to make three to go underneath the actual flower and they're very small very small petals so it will construct quickly so anyone who missed the petals at the very beginning we are going to go through the same shape again so when it comes to using a spinner obviously it's going to cut down my preparation time dramatically which we love uh, if your spinner stops picking up beads just slightly change that angle give it a little nudge and a little readjustment whenever i whenever i teach with the spinner and um I tend to walk around the table and I just give everybody's hands a little nudge. It's so strange that we can't do that now, but um, I would just give everyone's hands a little nudge and just slightly tweak the positioning and it makes the world of difference. You'll see that I've got it almost horizontal. I keep on just nudging that wire so that I'm realigning the needle hook for the base. I think that'll probably be enough. So you'll see it takes seconds rather than hours, <laughs> which is the kind of prep I could do with the equivalent of a bead spinner for all my emails and my admin. <laughs> Haven't quite come up with that yet though. Okay, so for the sepal base, we're going to make lovely tiny little petals. I'm going to start with just under a centimetre. So I've only got one, two, three, four, five beads on here. These are slightly thinner than my peach ones. So with those, my centimetre was about six beads. And this is why you can't count it, because they're not perfectly uniformed. Um, it doesn't matter if you count it, it will always be slightly different. So with these ones, I'm actually gonna make a pointed petal. Uh, the greenery has more of a pointed finish. So with the orchid, this is how we were doing it. Rather than with your roses, we're making rounded leaves. So I was holding it horizontally and wrapping around. With the petals, we want to go pointed. So I'm going to take my spine. I'm going to ask you to imagine a clock face. I've got my spine running through the center. This wire is over the top of it. And I take my wire to two o'clock on my clock face. I'm now going to go around the back of the wire spine and take my wire to 10 o'clock. That's the angle at 10 o'clock. And then I'm going to cross over diagonally down to 4 o'clock. So 2, 10, 4. That gives me a point. Can you see the difference in the petal shape? Like so. Then if you turn it around, <laughs> um, Again, like we did with the roses, the base can be rounded. So rounded petals, if we do the same with a clock face, over the front at three o'clock, around the back to nine o'clock, over the front to three o'clock. Okay, so it's just completely horizontal. Bringing it in, rotating it around. I have not trained my husband to do my admin, Camille, yet. No, maybe I should. I'm the administrator in this house. I do all the invoicing and actually he does do the taxes, which is good. I'm grateful of that. Couldn't do that one. Okay, so two o'clock, around the back, 10 o'clock, crossover, four o'clock. And that will give me a point down to the base, rounded all the way around few little coils to secure it trim it off I'm just going to give myself a few more turns of my wire so that's one of my little sepal bases i'm going to go a little bit smaller with the next one so one two three four five that one is a five row pointed petal now this one i think i'm going to go with a three just to give it that variation. And this is why I love it, because it doesn't matter how many of you um, buy the rose kits, make the roses, make it out of different beads, all of them are going to be unique. And that is what I love. All of them are gonna be slightly different. Um, and you can change the bead count, you can make them smaller, bigger, you could do whatever you like. There is still that creativity 
that you can use. So I'm going to, no, actually, I am going to do a bigger one. It just doesn't quite give me enough impact of the colour. So I will do the same again. I'll do a row of five. Always rotating it round, always flattening those beads in my hand, keeping it nice and neat. And I'm going to go for one more. I'm going to do three because I love the contrast of the peach against that green. So I'm going to go for three. Bringing it up, we'll make this one a little bit smaller. So I'm going to bring up less beads and you'll see how that will change the shape. Again, bringing in my fingers, opening it up, redirecting all of those coils up to the top. And then when it comes to this centre, I always slightly lift the spine so that the beads can lock underneath them. That too will give you a really lovely, neat finish. Two o'clock, round the back, 10 o'clock, crossing over to four o'clock. If you can't master the pointed petal, you could make your leaves rounded. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to dramatically affect the finished end result. I just like having them pointed, you know, from looking at a rose and sometimes it helps to have a picture or a real rose in front of you as well. Because you can actually then kind of replicate, just like I did with the orchid, <clears throat> the first time I made one, I sat with it. So you can see just by bringing up a smaller amount for that spine, it's really made a little bit of a fatter leaf as opposed to a longer one. And then I'm going to make the leaves for the stem as well whilst we're going. These will be a lot longer. And I'm just looking at my other one to make, whee, to make sure I get about the right length. I would say about a centimetre and a half. For the very middle and I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven rows so bringing this up rotating it around we're not doing too badly for time either um, once you make the petals the construction process is really quite quick um, the more you get used to working with the wire Obviously, the faster you are going to get, and I mean, I, I whizzed through these. I've probably made, <laughs> well, I, can't, I couldn't even tell you how many of these roses I've made. I've been doing them for years. Um, but you do get faster. They get neater. It's the same with anything. Practice is going to make perfect. Rotating it around and bringing it in. And then we will um, bind all of the stems. Now, that, for me, is the best bit because when you bind it with the floristry tape, you get just the most amazing realistic finish. It honestly just brings it to life. Now again, these uh, leaves are going to be completely exposed. So you really do want to make them as neat as possible. Um, obviously they will be visible from the stem. So you want them to look really nice it also helps that they are the last thing that you make because, of course, you've warmed up. You've perfected some of those techniques. By the time you get to them, you're a pro. Always doing that pointed, and you'll see I even push that little point down just to get that really lovely, sharp tip to the leaves. It really helps. And I'll go through it again for you. So as I'm working with this, I'm also almost curving it because um, I'm going to bend these and twist it and mould it. Um, so by almost just curving it slightly, I'm just making sure I've got the right bead count for the end shape almost there and go through that tip again so making sure your beads line up the spine wire around the front at two o'clock cross it over to the back to ten crossing it diagonally over to four o'clock all your clock faces 
And then that is one of my leaves. I'm bringing it into the base, wrapping it to secure. And there's my other leaf. And then one more. I know I'm keeping you for a little while, but we will do one more. And then we can add it all in. Then that's when the magic happens. It takes it from maybe looking messy. Your stem might not look as neat as mine, you know, with your wrapping. It takes it from slightly messier to just beautifully finished, realistic touch. Um, I can't stop looking at the yellow one since I made it. Um, I was having a look at it just to make sure I had all the same amount of bead counts and all sorts when I was doing this one. And the more you look at them, just they make you smile, which I think is really lovely. And although we love making jewellery, there is so, so much difference in techniques and, you know, working with wire and seed beads. It just takes very familiar materials to you, but allows you to create something completely different. Okay, last petal for our leaf. So because I'm starting with a small amount of beads, my petal is wider. Whereas if I were to start like we did in the very center of our rose with a longer spine, you would have a much longer, skinnier leaf. So these shorter center spines give you wide, rounded leaves. And so it's important to get the right shape for the right flower, just to add that realistic finish. And then I always crush down that top wire just to make sure I get that really lovely sharp point. And you'll see it ever so slightly goes taller, big gap down there, ever so slightly taller than the row of beads from before it. And that's how you get that lovely point. You see when it then interlocks, it's like they're staggered on either side and they just staircase above each other. Whereas with our rounded petals, you can see they sit nice and flushly next to each other. So you just get that continuation. Um, so going back to someone asking if a beginner could make it, absolutely. And you're perfecting two different shapes of your petals. Okay, just a couple more rotations and we're done. Then the fun happens. The magic starts. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I'll do two more turns. And then we're done. So that way I've got an 11 and a 13. So just that slight difference in size as well. Nothing's gonna be perfect. Nothing's gonna be uniformed. You wanna give it that natural finish. Just up to the top on my last one. And we'll bring that round and secure off. So we'll prep these petals in the same way that we did with our flower petals. Obviously we haven't got as many to do. So taking those sharper little edges, using your pliers to pinch them in, cutting the stem, cutting the very top spine, leaving yourself a little gap just to fold that over. There is always the front and the back because on the back side you have the exposed wire. You will see that spine, you will see the coils. So you'll know which way you're folding it over. Folding it down to secure, and then the last one. Now this is a big old leaf, 
So we will straighten up all these beads in the end. The bigger the petals get, and actually I'll show you this when we, I'm going to show you a poppy soon. Um, when we do that, there's actually a different way that you can make wider uh, petals because you can see that um, they start to open up and they start to expose. So I'm just going to neaten this up a little bit, flatten those out just to make sure I've got no gaps. Um, in terms of the actual domes, I'm going to show you um, this kind of size would fit in any of them. The smaller dome, you don't have to put a hole in it. It will hold it up in the dome itself. This one, for me personally, is perfect in the medium. But if you want that bigger space, you could even add in one more row of petals to fill the larger dome. It's just personal preference with those. Okay, so adding in the sepals on the base. What this will do is hide little areas like this where I've got exposed wire. So what I'm going to do is... With all of my other petals, I wanted the nice side to be visible, the front side, as opposed to the back side where you've got that wrapped wire. So this time, I'm going to put it on effectively upside down because I want the nice flush side, no wire, to be on the outside because that's what will be seen. So I'm going to hide... Oh, look at that contrasting colour. I'm going to hide that ugly bit of wire with one of my petals like so. We'll go in with a second one. I'm just going to knock that back because I want it to nudge right into underneath. I think I'm going to put this one right next to it so it just looks like they've split open. Holding that in place, wrapping down. And then we'll do one more. You could go for as many as you wanted on these outsides. About there, I think. Yeah, and then I've got whoop, then I've got one visible from every side. You could even add more on here if you wanted to. I'm just going to go for it on that side. And then wrapping that stem around. Okay, now we bind it. So I've got all those lovely petals right up to the top. I'm just going to move that one around actually. That ever so slightly shifted down. That's better. Okay, now you can open these up. You can make it so that it has that little cup. You can make it so that the edge flips up. You can make it so that it hugs the rose. It's entirely up to you. Now we're going to bind all of this together. You'll get your floristry tape. Floristry tape is a funny old thing. It's, um, it's not sticky to touch, but as soon as you stretch it, sticky finger time, absolutely. Um, it is going to um, release almost like a gum and it will stick to itself. So it doesn't stick to anything else, only itself. Um, so therefore, you want to be overlapping it. Now, I never cut the edges. I always prefer to have a rougher edge. So I just rip it like so. And that's because I use it to kind of fake extra greenery and extra petals. So if I put that in here, I'm going to hide that wire that is up at the top. And then it's just going to look like a little bit of exposed greenery exposed stem so I'm going to hold that there start to bind it round remember I said it will stick to itself so I want the wire the cord that ugh, the tape that I'm now coming round with to start holding on to itself so I'm holding it at an angle but I'm also working down the stems just be careful of these little bits because you want to make sure that they are coiled in on each other. Sometimes they can poke through, other times they will behave. I'm going to go all the way to the end and just rip that off, like so. And I actually think, because I can see quite a lot of my twists, it gives you a very realistic looking stem. 
Um, it doesn't um, it doesn't look too artificial. It kind of gives you twists and turns. Now, because I have another section of exposed wire, I'm actually going to run through again. So I just bring out some of my tape, stretch it to release that gum. I've got that lovely ripped end. Do you see what I mean? That will just sit in there now perfectly, right up at the top. It's going to hold on to itself. So I'm moving the tape down with my right hand and as my left hand then passes over it it's kind of twisting it together so my left hand is doing two jobs not only is it rotating the rows but it's also tightening and neatening up the tape that's just been added on and you can then if it hasn't stuck in any places you can kind of twist it almost like you're wringing out water you can neaten that up and there is our rose. Now to add on our leaves, because these will be exposed and they're growing out of it, I'm gonna make these um, bound together first of all. So because I've got quite a long stem and I want it to be just a little bit thicker, this is quite thick. So if I only had, <laughs> if I only had one of my um, twists of wire, it would be really quite thin compared to the actual base of my plant uh, stem. So I'm going to pop that uh, raggedy edge right up to the top of the spine, like so, so that it will hide that wire at the back. And then I'm just going to bind all of this together. And I don't need it to be don't need it to be too perfect and I don't need this stem to be too long because I'm only going to add it onto the actual um, stem of the flower and then just to neaten up that top where it's a little bit looser I'm just going to pull with my pliers to bring that out and then I'm going to fold this up on it give it a little twist Again, that rougher edge just to help hide some of that wire because remember, it's these um, leaves that will be most visible. It's going to be open on the actual stem. Winding that down, ripping that bit off. So I've kind of got that tape behind it that will just hide some of that wire. Um, you won't see all of it, but again, if you want to tighten it up, uh, twisting the wrong way. If you want to tighten it up you can just to make sure you get a nice neat finish okay and then we'll add these on to the actual stem so just like we did with our petals I'm just going to give it a nice little twist I don't want too much of a dome so I'm going to hold it flat with my thumb and I like to give these a little bit of a twist so rather than going straight over um, my finger I'm just giving it a bit more of a twist so one end is higher than the other just to give it a really lovely natural finish. And then you can twist this one the other way. You could twist it the same way. Slightly coiling over that top and by slightly twisting over and just giving the um, petal a little bit of a lip up on top, it actually hides that little section of your spine as well. And then decide where you want them to be on your stem. So you can move them around, slightly knock back that leaf, just a couple of centimetres from the top so that it will just sit and just beautifully grow out of the stem. So decide which way you want your rows to be facing. I'm just going to pinch all of those together a little bit more, open it up a little bit. So I want that to be my front side really. I think with those so because that's going to be my front I've got those lovely leaves at the back so I'm going to go for my leaf on my stem about there so it will sit just shy of the petals themselves hold that into place and bind onto the stem because you've actually put because you've actually put um, tape 
around the stem it's going to hold it into place as well but I will show you how we can neaten that up in a moment and then one other you could go higher with it you could go lower I think I'm going to go a little bit lower actually just about there bringing that out and binding around like so and it's going to give you a really lovely finish now because you can see some of this stem down at the bottom I'm just going to use the tape to bind that in so I'm going to take my tape I'm going to go into where the leaf meets the stem like so and I'm just going to wrap it around I don't want to add in that other leaf until about now and that will actually just help and hide and strengthen any of the rest of it as well. And then you can move them into place. Like so. And then once we go into the dome, you can work out which direction you want them all to go. So I'm gonna, because this is the front side of my rose I want exposed, I'm actually just going to take that leaf around a little bit more to the other side. So you can see the wire is really quite forgiving. You can move it, you can remould it, shape it, however you would like. Okay, now when it comes to actually attaching them into the dome, it's entirely up to you how you do it. My preferred method, so you could either use like a hot glue gun. I'll turn you up for this one and then I'll show you the rest of it. Um, you can either use a hot glue gun to attach it in. I actually prefer to have um, a drilled hole, so I've, I've got a Dremel. Um, I just put a hole through the base, it goes all the way. This is the pine ones that we have. I just use a wood stain to make it um, a slightly different color. Um, everything in my house is quite dark wood. And then you decide how tall you want it to be. So I'm gonna have some of this wire into the actual base of it and you'll see that I've got a really thick stem to about here and then it tapers off. So I'm going to cut just those straggly ends off and that will then go straight through. Now it might flop over to begin with, this is where you then just kind of find that centre gravity point. Um, if you find that it is too floppy you can, uh, like I was saying, reinforce it. Uh, but to be honest, there is a point where you will get it when it will stand up on its own. You can see a little gap in between those. And once it's in, you can play around with it. Now this is the medium dome. And it sits in absolutely beautifully. Um, if I put the larger dome on top, so obviously it's not quite gonna sit right, but you could see I could have a longer stemmed rose. I've still got probably about three or four inches gap up at the top. If I lift it up ever so slightly, you'll see that space. So it still looks lovely in the, in the um, larger dome. And then even in the smaller one, and remember, our small one is light up. I'll show you that. The rose is probably about two petals smaller for this one and I have really cut down that stem to just a little stump. It's probably only two inches and I don't have a hole in the smaller one because it actually holds itself up in the dome. So you can centralise it. Once you've popped it in, just lift up that dome, give the stem a little nudge into the centre and the, the rose itself actually suspends inside and then you've got the light up base as well. So it is loose in there but it holds itself perfectly in the smaller one. So it's entirely up to you which colour you go for, which uh, size dome you go for, it really is personal preference um, and by making a few of them you can of course even change and amend which one you display.
and there you go. That's it. It's so fun. It's a really lovely one to make. Um, it's one of my utter favourites. I just love the end results. Um, I know it's a bit longer than I'm normally with you, but I think it's worth it because they are just beautiful. Um, Kitty, it will come to you at some point, I'm sure. Um, and mum's bags eat the yellow one, so I'm roseless again. <laughs> but I'll make another one. Um, now, I will be back with you on Monday. We're going to be making wire earrings. We're making our own wire components, be it for necklaces, bracelets, earrings. I'm going to make chandelier earrings with you. Um, so we're going to be making that out of wire. Um, Kitty will be with you Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then from Monday onwards, we've got our new content, our new format coming. Uh, so make sure you head on over to the page um and you can catch up on everything um i think um i think i answered questions as we were going um jitty we have the peach which is what i was just making we have the yellow and the yellow is beautiful it's almost like a rainbow seed bead and you'll see that i've married up a different green with each color uh, so you've got the peach you've got the yellow you've got the red and you also have the purple. Um, the purple one I haven't made yet. Maybe that's the one I'll keep for myself. Um, and each set will make three of your roses. You can buy it with the domes or without. And you can buy extras if you want to do them as gifts. Um, okay, so that's the colours that we have. Um, I think I pretty much answered everything else. But if you've got any other questions, I will go through all of them as well. Um... So if you're doing the smaller domes, you can actually make smaller petals. You, Of course, it will be a quicker make as well because you don't have as many. Um, and then, of course, um, you could make larger ones if you want to do the bigger dome as well. Maybe start off small and work up bigger. You've got enough to make three roses in there. If you're going to make huge big ones, you probably won't get three. You'll get maybe one and a half or two. Um, I think I've answered everybody's questions. Do let me know. If you have any others, I'm not sure when the wooden spinners are due in. Um, hopefully soon, because I've got loads of flowers coming. Um, we do have the tiny little ones, I think. They're 3 99 the little mini ones. They do the job just as well as any others. Um, but I will ask Kitty and Simon to get a few more in stock, because they're so helpful. Um, and they are... Um, really in my mind essential when you're when you're doing the flowers as well thank you all so much right i need to go and get ready to teach bead club um at um 12 o'clock today we have our friday bead club so if you're watching internationally we've got a thursday night bead club and then we've got a friday morning bead club as well um some of our content is going to move to later in the day because we have so many of you watching from all over the world uh, so we're going to try and like flip flop mornings and evenings as well so that there is something for absolutely everybody um and we can catch you all at the right times for you which is nice um so bead club runs on a thursday night and a friday morning head over to beadclub.co.uk you can have a little look at those um for my friday afternoon group i will see you soon for my thursday night group last night thank you so much it was good fun and um, the majority of them um, were super pleased and had mastered a new technique by the end of it which was lovely um oh kim says thank you so much sarah let me just go back to your comment. Um, this has been brilliant and it's my first time. So thank you, Kim. Thank you for joining us and hello. Um, we are here on Monday morning at 10 o'clock as well, um, as well as um, over the weekend. So uh, do join us. You can head on over to our Facebook page or onto the website and you can go back. We've actually been doing these lives since March last year, uh, which is when we first went into lockdown. Um, so we decided to give you um, a bit of company every day. Um, so you can go back and watch any of those. There are hundreds and hundreds of them. So lots of techniques to catch up on. Um, thank you all so much. Um, loved seeing you all this morning. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you Monday morning. Thanks. Bye-bye.